Hey everyone, I'm Charles Judd and welcome back to the video beginning a look at subsection 1.1e for spanning tree protocol. There's a lot of in-depth information covered under this item and also we're moving into some more advanced topics as we continue to go down the blueprint. So I do expect these videos to start stretching out into multiple parts per blueprint section. So this video is going to specifically take a look at per VLAN spanning tree plus or PVST plus. PVST plus or per VLAN spanning tree plus is Cisco's modern implementation of spanning tree. Traditional spanning tree creates only a single spanning tree instance for a network regardless of the number of VLANs that are in place. You'll recall that with traditional spanning tree, there can only be one root bridge. So this means that traffic for all of those various VLANs would use the exact same path. The original standard was PVST, by the way, which was used with Cisco's proprietary ISL trunking protocol, and PVST Plus was later developed to support 802.1Q, which is the industry standard for trunking that we've previously examined. And basically, what PVST Plus allows us is to create multiple instances of spanning tree in our network. And in fact, we can create one spanning tree instance for every single VLAN. This means that we have the possibility of creating a different root bridge for every VLAN in our network rather than having a single root bridge. And each of those root bridges would handle all of the spanning tree path calculations for the VLAN to which it is dedicated. So if we had VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, as we're going to have here in this case, each of those can have their own root bridge dedicated to those path calculations. And we can also create secondary root bridges for VLANs as well, so that we can build in redundancy to our network. Let's look at the topology that I'm working with here. You can see that I have six switches and those are all interconnected with trunk links. So we have some redundancy built in there as well. And within this network, we have two VLANs. We have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. We have two host PCs connected to each of our access layer switches. So we have a total of four end devices, two of those in each of our VLANs. PC1 and PC3, those are in VLAN 10, and PC2 and PC4 are in VLAN 20. What we wanna do here is to configure switch one as the root bridge for VLAN 10, and we wanna configure switch two as the root bridge for VLAN 20. Additionally, we're going to configure a secondary root bridge as well. We want switch two to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 10, and we want switch one to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 20. So basically, if something happens to either one of these switches, the other switch will be able to carry on as the root bridge for both of those VLANs. So let's see what we currently have in place. We're on switch one and let's say show interfaces trunk. And you can see that gig zero slash zero and zero slash one. Those are both trunk ports. We can see the VLANs allowed on those. We're allowing both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, as well as our default native VLAN of VLAN one. Let's also say show spanning hyphen tree and let's say summary. And notice here that we are already in PVST mode. It says the switch is in PVST mode. So for newer Cisco iOS, this is actually the default spanning tree mode. And that's why we see that already in place. If we go under global configuration mode here and say spanning hyphen tree mode and look at contextual help, you can see our other options, which we'll explore at a later time. We have MST and rapid PVST. But again, by default, our method is PVST. So let's move on and look at that a little closer. If we say show spanning hyphen tree, you're gonna notice that we can see our different spanning tree instances. And we do have an instance for each of our VLANs. We have VLAN one, if we scroll to the top, we have an instance for VLAN one here, and you'll see the root ID ending in C04D. That is not our local root bridge, so switch one is not the root bridge for VLAN one. And you'll notice we have 
an instance for VLAN 10 as well with the same root bridge ID and VLAN 20 with the same root bridge ID. Again, we can see this root bridge ends in C04D. This particular local switch address is 927A. So this is not the root bridge. It looks as though gig zero slash zero is in the forwarding state. It's listed as a root port. And that means that this interface is closest to the root bridge. We can see from our topology that this is interconnected to switch three. So let's jump over to switch three and take a look there. On switch three, let's say show span. And again, we're gonna see our multiple instances of spanning tree running. We're gonna see that the root bridge ID, again, C04D, the local bridge ID is D316. So again, not the root bridge, uh, but we can see that we have a root port designated as gig zero slash one. From our topology, we can see that is connected to switch five. So it's pretty safe to assume that the root bridge currently is switch five, but let's jump over there just to verify that. We'll say show span. And we are explicitly told this bridge is the root for VLAN 20. This bridge is the root for VLAN 10. And if we scroll up, Finally, this bridge is the root for VLAN one as well. So it looks like switch five is our root bridge as it stands. So again, going back to our topology and what we actually want to configure, we want switch one to be the root bridge for VLAN 10, and we want it to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 20. So let's go back to switch one, and let's look at how we can configure that. Let's go under global configuration mode, and let's say spanning hyphen tree, and if we look at contextual help, we have several options here, but the option we want is at the bottom. We want to say VLAN. This is going to allow us to configure those per VLAN spanning tree options. And we wanna follow that with the VLAN number. I'm gonna start with VLAN 10. We'll look at contextual help again. A few things we can do here. We can configure the max age interval. We can adjust the hello interval. We can set the priority. But in this case, I want to say root because I wanna set this as a root bridge for VLAN 10. If we look at contextual help once more, we can set that as our primary or our secondary root. And of course we want this to be the primary root for VLAN 10. So I'll use the primary keyword and I'll hit enter. Now we can do essentially the same thing to configure a secondary root bridge for VLAN 20. So we'll say spanning hyphen tree. This time we wanna say VLAN 20. And for the root, we want to set it as the secondary root bridge for VLAN 20. And then we can hit enter. Let's go to switch two now. And we want to do something fairly similar. Global configuration mode. And we'll say spanning hyphen tree VLAN 10 root. We want that to be the secondary root bridge for VLAN 10. Spanning hyphen tree VLAN 20 and we want it to be the primary root bridge for VLAN 20. So that looks good, all of that's in place. Let's go back to switch one. And we'll clear off just a little bit of room and let's say show spanning hyphen tree. And we can see again, our multiple instances. Let's scroll up just a bit. And you'll notice for VLAN 10, now on switch one, we're told this bridge is the root. The root ID ending in 927A matches the local bridge ID 927A. This is in fact the root bridge for VLAN 10. If we look at VLAN 20, we're not told that it is the root bridge, but we're told the root bridge ID ends in 091A. So we assume that this should be switched to if we've configured everything correctly. If we look at our interfaces, we'll notice that we have a root port listed under gig zero slash zero. And of course with VLAN 20, with switch two being the root bridge, that makes complete sense. If we look up under VLAN 10, we'll notice that both gig zero slash zero and zero slash one are in the forwarding state. While back to VLAN 20, gig zero slash one is in the blocking state. Let's jump back to switch two and we'll verify things here. Look at our spanning tree instances. 
And right away at the bottom, we see that this verifies that this is the root bridge for VLAN 20, as we would expect. And similarly, we see 927A. We already know that's the bridge ID for switch one, and that's listed as the root bridge for VLAN 10. So that all looks good. That looks just as we would expect. Let's also say show run pipe to include spanning hyphen tree. And this is going to give us our bridge priority values. You can see both of those listed here for VLAN 10 and for VLAN 20. Notice we have separate priority values for each VLAN. You might recall that the default priority value for spanning tree is 32768. So PVST has altered those priority values. We can see that the current priority value on switch two for VLAN 10 is 28672. Let's jump to switch one and let's run the same command. Show run pipe to include spanning hyphen tree. And we'll compare the value that we get on this side. We can see that on switch one, the priority for VLAN 10 is 24576. Of course, that priority is lower than the one we saw on switch two. If we jump over there, 28672 on switch two, 24576 on switch one. This having a lower priority value means that, of course, this is going to be the root bridge for VLAN 10. And we have the exact opposite scenario happening for VLAN 20. We have the higher priority value on switch one and the lower priority value on switch two, making switch two the root bridge for VLAN 20. Let's go here on switch two. Let's go under global configuration mode. Let's go under interface range gig zero slash zero through zero slash one. Those are both of our active trunk connections. And what I wanna do here is to simply shut down these interfaces so that we can see what happens with a secondary root bridge configured. Remember, we've configured switch one as the primary root bridge for VLAN 10 and the secondary root bridge for VLAN 20. So if switch two goes down, theoretically, switch one should take over root bridge priorities for both VLANs. Now that does take a little bit of time for that convergence to happen. So this is a good time to talk about what these port states look like. PVST Plus uses the exact same port states as traditional spanning tree. We start with 20 seconds of the blocking state, and we start here in the blocking state in order to allow spanning tree to complete any convergence before any traffic is forwarded. Blocking ports do not forward frames, and they do not learn MAC addresses, but they do receive BPDUs from other switches so that they can learn about changes to the switching topology. Next, the port will transition from blocking to listening for 15 seconds. This is where the port can receive and also send BPDUs so that it can participate in the election of the root bridge, the root ports, and the designated ports. If this port is not selected as either a root port or a designated port, it's going to eventually move back into the blocking state. If the listening port though is selected as a root port or a designated port, then it's going to transition to the learning state for 15 more seconds. The port will continue to send and listen for BPDUs, and it will also begin to learn information. It will begin to add information to its local MAC address table. And the final state is when the port moves from learning to forwarding. And once this is complete, then the port is fully functional. It can send and receive BPDUs, it can learn MAC addresses, and it can forward frames. Any ports that are selected as root or designated ports are going to eventually transition into this forwarding state. One more thing to point out here, just some terminology, is that the 15 seconds we see in the listening phase and the 15 seconds we see in the learning phase is what we call the forwarding delay, which again is a total of 30 seconds by default in PVST+. Now we can, of course, adjust this, but that is the default value. Let's go back to switch one. And let's see what's happened after we've shut down our interfaces on switch two. Let's say show spanning hyphen tree. We see our multiple instances of spanning tree running. Notice now for VLAN 20, 
We're told this is the root bridge. If we go up for VLAN 10, it's also the root bridge for VLAN 10. So it looks like our secondary root bridge designation worked exactly as we would want it to. Switch 1 was able to take over root bridge responsibilities in the event of Switch 2 failing. So that completes our look at per VLAN spanning tree plus. In the next video, I'll be looking at a variation of that called rapid PVST plus. I hope you found this content useful and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.